Hi, I'm, I'm Jamil from Best Buy Canada team. Uh, I work on the OpenShift platform team. Hi, I'm Tanim Ibrahim. I'm a principal technical manager. I focus primarily on OpenShift container platform and work closely with Best Buy Canada. Uh, my name is Andrew Blanc. I'm a senior principal consultant with Red Hat. Uh, I was engaged by the Best Buy Canada team to help assess their OpenShift container platform uh, environment, but also work with them to get through the holiday season. So for those, for those of you who do not know, Best Buy is in the retail industry, and the retail industry has seen some changes over the course of the last decade or so. Uh, when you think about how customers interact with retailers, it has certainly changed. You no longer are going into brick and mortar stores exclusively, you are going ahead and looking at new avenues on how to work with the different retailers, one of them being online acquisitions. You're doing your shopping online, you're doing your purchasing online, you're doing your potentially your trading and your bartering online. And then also in addition, the competition is ex really exceedingly expanding. Uh, how many of you have a virtual assistant in your home or uh, in your car Amazon Alexa, Cortana, Google Home. How many of you have purchased something from an online retailer through that tool? Raise your hand. The competition out there is no longer Sears, Pennies, Target. It's including a whole, no, whole bunch of additional retailers out there. And they're disrupting the competitive landscape. And as we've seen, a lot of the brick and mortar traditional stores have struggled or in worst cases, have gone out of business. I mean, I look at, so I'm from Chicago, and Sears Roebuck was you know, massive. They owned half the city. Nowadays, you barely hear of Sears, and they were just one of the casualties in the retail space. And uh, Jamila is gonna talk more about who Best Buy Canada is and what they are. Okay, Best Buy. So one of the Canada's largest and most successful retailers. Uh, we started our first store in 2002. Uh, now it's, uh, we have more than uh, 177 stores, and we have traffic like 250 million traffics uh, per year. And our headquarters is in Vancouver, BC. Uh, we have around uh, 1,200 people in our corporate office. I am one of them. It's funny because Diane's not too far away from Vancouver. She's like a hop, hop skip, and jump away. Yeah, uh, so we have lots of technical challenges at the beginning, so you know the long uh, lead times. So whenever the developer is asking for a new environment, it has lots of dependencies. Like we, does, uh, we do this yum install package, it has lots of dependency packages, same as this. So they request the environment to the platform team, then we have uh, uh, the platform team goes to the virtual assistant team for the VMs, uh, then the virtual assistant team goes to the network team for the IP, DNS, and other things. And then we also have the storage team and the crypto team for SSL certificates. So it takes around like three weeks to four weeks. Uh, during that time, most of the developers are having coffee outside in the lobby, so they're not working because their environment is in progress building. Uh, another thing is like uh, more, more of the manual, manual steps. So most of the time, the production environment is not same as the development environment. So we had lots of incident at the beginning. So they are pushing something that is working on the dev environment, but it is not actually happening the same in the production. Uh, also challenging uh, was to scale up the environment when we need. Uh, same thing, again, manual process. So we have to estimate ahead of the time what the peak traffic will be and what we are looking for. Uh, to help us, so we started with OpenShift. Uh, our journey started on 2016 and 17. We started with uh, OpenShift origin at the time to do some POC, proof of concept, uh, talking to the leadership team, uh, also our development team that, okay, we are planning to introduce this. Uh, in 2017 or 18, uh, we deployed uh, OpenShift Enterprise 3.5 uh, in the production successfully. It has some uh, challenging at the beginning, but uh, uh, teams are coming along. Uh, now we are upgraded from 3.5 to 6, now 3.7. And we are still working on how to go out to 3.11 to get the latest and greatest of the features. That was in between when we are deploying OpenShift. Now the after life of OpenShift, there is shortened life of development environment. 
uh, whenever the uh, developers need, they can just click and they can create their own projects and uh, they don't have to wait for other teams. Uh, so it increases the uh, deployment uh, from uh, their perspective and also it's a uh, ease of scalability. So whenever they need, they just scale up their parts and they take their own resources. Uh, and so we import other teams so they don't have to depend on other teams uh, for the infrastructure, uh, improve uh, DevOps principles, uh, more pipelines and things going on. And yeah, you can guess that who is having more coffee breaks nowadays, the platform people. <laughs> Uh, even we are uh, working on this, uh, we still have to go through those holiday seasons. Uh, lots of traffic comes in, so we always partner with our Red Hat experts. So uh, Tanim and uh, Andrew is helping us. So I will ask Tanim to say something on MTH. Thanks, Jamil. So make the holidays or goes as MTH within Best Buy. That's the time frame when Best Buy gets ready for the critical holiday sales period. So. Even though the holiday season doesn't start quite till late November in North America, the preparation for the uptake in traffic, store traffic, online traffic, that starts around mid-August. So that's when we go through a lot of load testing, performance testing, regression testing, to make sure that the projected traffic that we're looking for is actually going to meet the demand of our cluster. So as part of that, as a TAM, I also perform supportability check, uh, stress test check to make sure that the components the customer is using is are on par with what supportive metrics allows them. So the main critical part is uh, from August 15 till about uh, first of all October is the testing period, and October 1st is when the change freeze takes in place. So once change freeze in, is in place, essentially you can't make any more changes to your code base. So no incremental changes, no new features. You're only allowed to make changes at the approval of your senior leadership if that somehow impacts the holiday sales. So no more changes. Any, any issues that comes across during that time, we at uh, Red Hat uh, work very closely. Even a minor issue is treated as a severity once because we know how important having a stable uh, server uh, cluster is important during the holiday season. And then we have the first big demand date, which happens right at uh, Thanksgiving uh, during, uh, during for North America. And then we have the Cyber Monday, the following Monday, and Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. During this time, customer has access to the peak demand uh, technical manager service and peak demand customer success manager, who are 24 by 7 on-call resources. So anytime if there is an issue, any outage that happens, customer can reach out to us directly, and we work with our extensive support team uh, to make sure everything um, is resolved as quickly as possible so there is minimal disruption to the customer success. Uh, then we have uh, the next three critical dates for holiday uh, period is the Christmas Eve, the Boxing Day, which happens the day after Christmas, and then you have the New Year's Day. And the same protocol applies that time. Customer has access to the peak demand, technical account manager, and a customer success manager, and they were, we work very close with the customer during that time to make sure all issues are resolved. As part of the load testing, we do a lot of uh, regression testing as well throughout the process, which is pretty important to make sure there's no bugs or anything that needs to be backported. So in the past, before we had OpenShift in place, so I have been a TAM with Best Buy for eight years now. Uh, so I have seen my share of outages that happened during the holiday season. And, and, and no matter how minor the outage might be, the overall experience, customer experience always goes down with an outage. And when you have customer experience that goes down, that leads to lost revenue, lost sales. So it's obviously not a good thing. Uh, and we have long queues at the customer because some certain features aren't working, because we couldn't demand, we couldn't have the server up and running for the long time, essentially, because it had uh, some features that had to be turned off because the demand couldn't be met based on what we had. And sometimes we had to impromptly start up servers because the projected growth, traffic growth that we had planned exceeded what we're actually seeing in the traffic. So setting up additional VMs, additional clusters on the fly always led to more complicated scenarios. And then um, Andy is going to talk a little bit more about how we have implemented OpenShift uh, to make the, make the holidays period a smoother experience for the customer. 
So thanks, Tanim. Uh, maybe around the September, October time frame, uh, Best Buy Canada engaged with Red Hat Consulting to assess their current environment and then to adequately help them prepare for the MTH season. Now, I've worked with a number of different customers, both in the retail space, and one of the key things that we like to do is to put a preparedness plan in place to ensure that they're going to have success through their critical period. You know, MTH is probably one of the most, if not the most um, important period for Best Buy Canada. Uh, we did some initial steps for just assessing their current architectures, making sure that each of the environments has all of the critical patches so that they would have no vulnerabilities going into the holiday season. And then next what we ended up doing is to start putting together some performance tests. Tanim kind of started to talk about that a minute or two ago, but we wanted to assess the expected traffic that we were going to see. We took last year's, the 2017 traffic period, went ahead and assessed what we thought would be the estimated amount of traffic that we're going to expect in 2018. We then went ahead and took a percentage of wiggle room, basically. We said, okay, is, we know the expected amount of traffic. We want to go ahead and ensure that it can meet the demands of, let's say, 140, 150%. If we can ensure that our services can meet that demand, we're going to feel fairly confident that even if we meet and also exceed our expected demands, I mean, I'm hoping that we exceed the expected demands. That means more people are purchasing, browsing, consuming our services. That's the most critical and success criteria for the business. And then what we ended up doing is from that, we went ahead and determined which applications, which underlying infrastructure we needed to scale up to meet the capacity. There were certain applications that we felt very confident about. Other ones that we said, it's gonna be a little close. We probably should go ahead and add a little more resources to the underlying infrastructure. In addition, we also looked at you know, pod auto scaling, ways to, you know, as you know, with traffic demands from customers, as soon as Black Friday hits, they're gonna to wanna to go ahead and start purchasing. We wanna make sure our services are scaled up effectively and can scale dynamically to take advantage of the infrastructure that we ended up deploying. Now, from a customer perspective, what is the holidays really like? How many of you go out, you know, who live here in North America, go out on Black Friday? Raise your hand. How much fun is it to go out on Black Friday? The sarcasm, I'm sure, with the woos are exceeding. It is a painful experience. If you're gonna go ahead and take advantage of the most critical deals, you're gonna be camping out overnight in the stores. I'm from, you know, we're from the northern part of the country. Tanim, you're lucky, you're from the southern <laughs> part, but it's cold up in the north, especially in that time of year. You're out there, you're, you're cold. You wanna just get into the store as soon as it opens, beat the crowds and obviously work with the friendly customer staff who's help, there to help you, but it's still an extremely stressful period. I personally have not gone out and done the, the, the Black Friday thing, just not my thing, but for those of you who happen to brave the stores, good luck. Um, from an OpenShift administrative perspective, we didn't really have the craziness that all the customers face. What did you think, Jamil? I thought it was pretty, pretty calm. Yeah, it was uh, pretty good. Uh, so we were prepared uh, well, but we were also scared of MTH traffic. Uh, but uh, it seems very good at the time. Uh, so there's this uh, peak load graph. You can see the average traffic is like 100,000 per minute. But uh, during uh, MTH or Black Friday, it instantly jumps to the seven times or 10 times of traffic. So we have to put those auto scaling and uh, extra resources ahead of the time. and. Uh, so in general, the request comes like 11,000 requests per second. Uh, uh, and OpenShift, uh, it was very calm at the time. Uh, no outages uh, uh, and no incidents uh, during that uh, week. And we were very happy with that. Uh, we shared our learning experience uh, to this journey. And uh, we actually started with few applications. Then after this journey as well, uh, we invited other, other teams to get in. And during that time, we made some community environment inside our organization. Also, Andy helped us on that uh, community for this best practices. Yeah. So one of the areas I also focus on, aside from the actual preparedness and delivery, is helping organizations build their community. And that's essential when you look to adopt OpenShift, is you want to build a community around OpenShift to share learnings across the entire organization. Because in many organizations I work with, 
They're just getting into containers. They're also looking to see how they can optimize their usage of containers. And building that community allows the organization to scale effectively. You don't want to just have one small team manage everything. It doesn't scale well. So what we ended up doing is we started to work with the Best Buy team and continue to build on their internal process called the community of practice. Community of practice is something we also do here within Red Hat as well. And I am the, uh, the co-manager of the container and PaaS community of practice. And what a community of practice really is meant to do is to bring together thought leaders around a particular area and space. So one in particular container and PaaS within Red Hat. We go ahead and bring these experts, people who are interested, and people who just want to collaborate amongst one another. We'll, we'll then go ahead and take some of our learnings, curate, cultivate, and then share it out with the community within the organization. And that's what we ended up doing too, is I went ahead and to assess their current structure of their communities at Best Buy Canada, saw how they were able to take in their learnings, be able to help work, have them work more effectively amongst one another, and to create a plan to help share and build out their community. And that's really key when adopting OpenShift, is building that community. And through, through the, our combined work, everyone from the delivery team, myself, to Tanim on the technical account manager team, to obviously most importantly, Jamal, Camille, who was able to actually implement it within the organization, we're able to scale effectively the different communities that we're part of. And the containers team within, within Best Buy are part of a number of COPs that Best Buy currently has, ranging from the DevOps COP, the uh, platform uh, auto, uh, infrastructure and automation COP, the operations and engineering COP, and site reliability and engineering. Now, how many of you, show of hands, that I'm very, I like participation in, in our presentations, how many of you have a similar program within your organization? It's pretty good. How many of you are looking to adopt a similar program? You have, you have great wants and wishes, but just haven't had a chance to do so. Well, I'm gonna be around all week, Jamil's gonna be around, it's in with Tanim. We want to hear about you, hear your experiences and hear exactly how we might be able to take some of our learnings, the learnings within Red Hat, the learnings within Best Buy Canada, to help you build out your program. So from that, we also, as part of the community, we want to share how we're able to help the organization look forward. And Jamil is going to talk more about what Best Buy Canada is looking to do moving forward. So we are looking for uh, a hybrid cloud strategy. Most of the, uh, our deployment is in running on-prem, so we are also looking how to extend it to the cloud, so it's uh, more easy to deploy VMs or uh, machines online. Uh, uh, we are also trying to get uh, attention from other teams that, uh, that are not running on OpenShift, so we are welcoming them and assisting them to migrate their applications from legacy systems to OpenShift. Uh, uh, and then we are also looking to increase more automation, uh, mainly looking for that uh, OpenShift 4 we saw it this morning. So we can just click the button, update the cluster, and then can, I can have more extra time to do some other stuff. Uh, yeah, and it will be easier uh, for us for on-prem and the hybrid one, and the application of automations, and doing the service mesh around that. Um, thank you, thank you Red Hat, and thank you our Best Buy leadership team for uh, this scope. Uh, we will be here around, uh, but if you have more questions or any other questions, Perfect. yeah, uh, get us, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.